Hello guys, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to explain about iron carbon phase diagram. And now I know there are a lot of videos explaining the same topic out there. But in this video, I'm trying to give a general idea on what is phase diagram and uh, how do you build a phase diagram and how do you specifically build iron carbon phase diagram. Initially, I wanted to make this video as a single video but uh, the topic is so vast that I had to make it in two parts. Uh, so in this video, it, this is a basic introduction video to phase diagrams and carbon and carbon phase diagram. So let's start the iron carbon phase diagram. And what is a phase diagram? The definition says that phase diagram is a type of chart used to show conditions at which distinct phases occur and coexist at equilibrium. So let's go bit by bit in this definition. It is a type of chart. So it is a graph basically uh, and it is and it will show the conditions at which distinct phases occur and coexist at equilibrium. Uh, phase is a homogeneous type of arrangement inside of a material. Okay. And the phase diagram shows how these different phases coexist at equilibrium. And uh, we come to an, another important topic which is cooling curve. Here we are basically representing uh, two metals on temperature and time graph. So temperature going upside is heating and going downside is cooling. So imagine I have metal A at this temperature and uh, here it is in molten liquid state. Uh, all of it is melted. Okay. Here we have liquid. If I cool it, it will cool and temperature will go down and it will reach this point where it starts solidifying and the temperature remains constant uh, until all the melt, all the liquid is converted into solid and that is what we call solidifying temperature uh, or the same thing if you are heating the metal it is called melting point so the main point is that while the metal is solidifying it will exit the temperature will not change and after the entire metal is converted into solid at this point then it will cool and the temperature will drop again and uh, similarly if you take another metal B whose melting or solidifying temperature is lower than metal A as you can see here which is T2 the same uh, behavior we can observe if we take it if we take a liquid molten metal B and cool it it will uh, the temperature will drop down until T2 and it will keep constant for some time uh, here whole liquid melt is turned into solid and then it cools down again but if you take an alloy of both metal A and metal B then you can see we take we start at the same point at liquid molten metal and we start cooling it with time it will the temperature will, will drop down but the solidifying temperature is not constant in case of alloy because this is due to the differential cooling of different metals. Here metal A solidifies at higher temperature and metal B solidifies at low temperature. Uh, due to this disparity, the there is a temperature difference during which the metal cools down. Uh, this is the main takeaway from this cooling curve. That is, if you mix different metals together, then they don't melt or solidify at same temperature. Then moving on to next one, we have a simple phase diagram. Here you can see the metal A and metal B and this is the alloys of metal A and metal B. On the left side we have pure metal A and on the right side we have pure metal B. This percentage is composition of B in A, weight percent. That means that here 20% is there. This means that this alloy is 20% of metal B and 80% of metal A. Similarly, here 40% of metal B plus 60% of metal A. This is another, another alloy. Likewise, there are all the different alloys uh, in this direction. Here we have on the each end we have pure metal. That is a simple phase diagram. And uh, this y axis is temperature. So going up in the y, y direction is heating and going down is cooling. So as we discussed earlier, let's look at metal A and uh, we start heating the metal A and it starts melting at this particular temperature, which is the melting point. 
and uh, after this point entire metal a will be molten liquid similarly in metal b if we start heating it from this point it will melt at this temperature which is its melting temperature and the entire thing will be liquid in case of the alloys as we saw the melting temperature is not constant as you can see at this green part we start heating it at this temperature and it will go and at this point um, the the alloy is solid and from this point to this point it will take for it to melt so at this point the whole alloy is a liquid similarly with varying compositions you can see this time also varies or the temperature difference also is getting varied uh, this is a simple phase diagram next we come to iron carbon phase diagram here you can see temperature on the y axis and weight percent carbon iron carbon phase diagram is uh, basically representing the phase diagram of iron and carbon and here carbon is the alloying element so we represent carbon weight per weight percent carbon on x axis and you can see there is only 6.67% here whereas here we have 100% of metal b and that is because what comes after this 6.67% is not of practical importance to engineers the most important thing to start this phase diagram is the different phases distinct phases so you can see here i have colored distinct phases on the top you can see this red color whole thing all this is liquid so any any combination of iron and carbon the entire thing will be liquid above this temperature line and this is this boundary is called liquidus line okay and you can see a small violet region here a distinct phase called delta is there and here a distinct phase called gamma is there and again one more distinct phase called alpha is here as shown you might be wondering what is alpha gamma and delta and uh, l is represented for liquid which is straight forward but alpha is alpha ferrite alpha is generally used uh, as a substitute for ferrite in bcc structure which is body centered cubic structure and gamma is called gamma is also ferrite but in face centered cubic structure what happens is if you start heating iron at 912 degrees celsius it will the crystal structure will transform to fcc so that's why this is a different phase and similarly at you can see 3094 degrees celsius it will again change to delta and delta is ferrite in bcc structure but at high temperature that is about the distinct phases and uh, one more important thing is between two distinct phases there will be a mixture of both of the phases for example here there is gamma at this boundary like he inside here and uh, in this boundary there is liquid after this so in between these two phases there will be a mixture of these two distinct phases which is gamma plus liquid and similarly if you look at this this boundary and this boundary is enclosed by alpha and gamma so at this uh, boundary of between both of them there will be mixture of alpha and gamma similarly here there is gamma and uh, here there is fe3c hence there is a mixture of gamma and fe3c in this region and alpha and fe3c in this region now there are three important reactions happening in this uh, phase diagram and uh, i have represented them with downward arrows at these points okay let's look at this point okay. the temperature here is 727 degrees centigrade and uh, what this basically means is at 727 degree centigrade and if you have a an alloy of 0.76 weight percent carbon and you cool it then the phase changes from gamma to alpha plus fe3c that is one uh, reaction another reaction is at 1147 degree celsius 
and at 4.3 weight percent carbon. If you cool that alloy, then the liquid phase will cool into gamma plus Fe3C phase. Similarly, at this top, you can see another one more reaction at 0.2 weight percent carbon and 1493 degrees Celsius. If you cool this alloy, then in this region, what what phase will be present we can know because here there is delta and here there is liquid so between these two phases here there will be delta plus liquid so the delta plus liquid cools to gamma that is one more reaction these reactions are named as peritectic eutectic and eutectoid uh, you can compare this with what i have explained before this is the peritectic reaction, this is the eutectic reaction and this is the eutectoid reaction. This is the basic explanation of ion carbon phase diagram. In the next video, I will try to explain a bit more in this topic. Finally, if I made any mistakes, then please correct me in the comments. I will provide this presentation as a PDF in the links in the description. And thanks for watching the video.